My name is Javier Hernandez and my nickname is Chicharito. What's up everybody? My name's Annie and welcome back to Kit Guru. So as you may know, Ava Media make all sorts of products aimed at live streamers and content creators, such as capture cards and microphones, many of which we've reviewed here on Kit Guru in the past. But today, however, we're checking out something totally new from them. And really, there's nothing else on the market quite like this product. At least nothing that combines all of these features into one item. We're checking out the Ava Media live streamer Nexus AX310 control center coming in at 320 pounds. Don't forget, if you haven't already, to smash that like and subscribe button to support us for free. Okay, what is it then? Well, as the name suggests, it's pretty much a one-stop shop control center aimed at live streamers. This device can take a microphone input and power it if it requires phantom power, and you can also control your audio levels of different inputs too. Essentially, it's a Go XLR without any voice changing effects, but that's not all. It's also basically combined with an Elgato Stream Deck. At least that's what it's aiming to be. It doesn't have any video in input or output, so it isn't able to capture footage at all. It's purely designed to be an audio solution with the added features of a touchscreen and pads to enable or disable actions and view stats all in one place. Considering a Go XLR will set you back around £330 and an Elgato Stream Deck XL will set you back another £220 or so, totaling £550, the AX310 Nexus does seem quite enticing at £320, but is it any good? Let's start with what you get inside the box. You get the Control Center Nexus itself, a power cable with different ends for different countries, a 3.5mm TRS cable, and a 3. 5 mm to 6.3 mm adapter and a USB 2.0 type B to type A cable. Essentially everything you need to get started. Bear in mind you will need your own XLR cable if you're going to use an XLR microphone with the live stream and Nexus. Ava Media did also launch the AM330 Dynamic XLR microphone at the same time as the Nexus. If you want to hear what the AM330 sounds like when connected to the AX310 Nexus, you can watch our dedicated review of that microphone here on KitGuru. So design-wise, the AX310 Nexus looks great. It's built from a nice, sturdy, speckled plastic that isn't a fingerprint magnet. It's also very sturdy too, with no creaking or flexing when pressing down on it. The Nexus comes with a magnetic stand attached to the bottom too, and I like the fact that you have the option to raise it up at an angle to see the screen and control better, but this angle is locked. If you take the stand away, then of course it lays down at less of an angle. Instead of having a locked angle, I'd have liked this stand to be adjustable since it's detachable. So you could have the Nexus almost vertical if you wanted, but sadly that's not the case here. The stand is nice though, and it attaches well with those magnets. We have an RGB LED zone that encompasses the entire edge of the Nexus, at least the sides and the bottom. The zone stops along the back edge and instead it's replaced by a silver or grey accent. On the bottom we have rubber non-slip feet but that's about it. On the front face of the Nexus we have all of our controls. We have a 5 inch IPS screen that doubles up as a touch panel. Now I'm glad that this is IPS as it's easier to see at various angles but there is a heavy black border around the screen it would have been so much nicer if the screen was just larger or just the border wasn't there at all so we could just have a cutaway for the screen. But the one downside is the screen is pretty reflective and because you can't adjust the angle too much it could be an issue, at least for me it was. To the right of the screen we have four overly large touch pads. Unfortunately these pads frustrate me for a couple of reasons. The first being that they don't depress evenly, they rock towards the direction of where you press them instead of the whole pad moving as one. If I run my finger around the edges, you can see here how it rolls around following it as the other side pops back up. They don't seem to fit their cutouts precisely either with gaps above the pads. The other thing is that there is no indication of what you've set these to unless you have the software open and in view. They do have RGB LEDs behind them that you can set to a static color or have them mimic the color of your icon, but I didn't find this overly helpful in use. Personally, I'd have much rather 
father has seen smaller touchpads so they would actuate better in a row of four in one straight line on the far right and have the screen extend over for better coverage. Towards the bottom, we have six adjustable knobs that also depress and click in too. For example, you can click in the microphone knob to quickly mute and unmute that specific audio line. I really like this feature as it's super easy to find the audio you want to mute and unmute without any thought. Personally, I prefer mixer style sliders for on the fly audio mixing, but I do understand why they chose knobs here instead. They're much smaller and this makes the entire Nexus control center much smaller overall, which is a good thing. Sliders are easier to see your levels at a glance, but to counter this, Ava Media have put 10 RGB LED sections around each knob to indicate what level they're set to. If you have the software open, then this number is displayed in the center of the knob on the screen also. These knobs turn fine with noticeable incremental steps that follow along with the LED sections, but one LED section requires two incremental turns to jump to the next section, and that's because each LED section represents 10 increments. One turn of the knob only changes this increment by five and is only visible with the software open unless you have the Nexus's screen set to reflect your mixer on the screen and then you can see it increasing or decreasing by increments of five instead. This is fine but personally I'd prefer to have a more visual precise representation via the LEDs. These six knobs are also labeled directly on the physical device itself, set for microphone, line-in, console, system, game, and chat. Even in the software, these are not changeable, so you can't customize these to your preferred order, or if one becomes redundant because you're not using that feature, you can't reprogram it to another action if you wanted to use it for something else. Spinning the Nexus control center around and looking at the ports on the back, the first thing you notice is that they are indented into the system itself. Despite this looking aesthetically pleasing, this is kind of frustrating to me. I have a background in music performance and of all the mixers and interfaces I've used and owned, all of the ports protrude from the back edge for easy cable management and use of right angle cables. With the Nexus, you're forced to use straight cables only because the ports are inset into the device by about an inch. What I do like is that each port is clearly labeled. On the far right of the device, we have a physical on-off switch, which is nice to see. Port-wise, we have our DC power input, USB-B, an optical port for use with consoles, 3.5 millimeter line-in for use with, say, the Nintendo Switch or any device like phones or tablets, an XLR input, that can also be used with the included 3.5 millimeter to jack adapter for inputting a gaming headset microphone, for example, a 3.5 millimeter line out, and finally a 3.5 millimeter headphone out. Now, despite having a good IO selection here, this is yet another thing that sadly annoys me. The inclusion of the 3.5 millimeter line out port is not only frustrating, but limiting too. My studio monitor speakers require dedicated left and right XLR out ports, which are commonplace on all mixers and audio interfaces, but it has been overlooked here. I can't use them without adapters and more cables that could introduce more noise to the system. The rest of the review will be focusing on the software side of the Nexus and what it can or can't do, but before we dive in, I do want to express my issues when installing the software. When I initially set up my Nexus for my review of the AM330 microphone mentioned earlier, I did run into a crippling issue. I used the antivirus Bitdefender and this constantly thought the installation was a virus or had infected files. I had to manually delete any and all files related to the Nexus, manually disable Bitdefender, then install the software and make exceptions for it within Bitdefender before re-enabling the antivirus. I told Ava Media of my problems and they said they'd reach out to Bitdefender to add their software to a whitelist. Fast forward to when I began testing the Nexus for this review and I was pleased to see I had a software and firmware update until I went to install it and Bitdefender once again started deleting supposedly infected files and this meant I had to then install it and then remove all the files once again, disable the antivirus, reinstall it and make more exceptions before it could work. Now this whole process took at least 30 minutes and was really frustrating, especially if you do need to do this with each software update. 
Now to install the Nexus software, you can't just download it either. You have to first install Ava Media's Assist Central, have the Nexus plugged in and on, and then it will detect and tell you the software that you need to download through Assist Central. Once you finally get the software to load, you'll be greeted with a very brief overview of each section. And the first thing you'll notice is that the window itself isn't scalable. So if you're on a 4K monitor, this could be very small. Luckily for me, it's okay at 1440p, but I did automatically try to resize it but then realize this just isn't possible. Despite it looking fairly cluttered when you first see it, the software is pretty easy to use when you've spent a few minutes poking around. It's pretty much the physical layout of the Nexus itself with the screen to the left, pads to the right, and knobs at the bottom. At the very top of the page, you'll see a tab saying Mixer Default. This is essentially your profile area. You can create new ones by clicking the plus button, copy, rename, or delete as well. Clicking the six knobs at the bottom represents the physical knobs and it opens up the audio mixer options on the left hand side. Single mix is selected first and this is what you will hear as the creator and also your stream will hear this too. Clicking where it says single mix at the top opens up a tab that lets you select dual mix and here you can have two separate sub mixes, one for you to hear and then another different one for your stream to hear and this idea is absolutely excellent as you can really customize what you want yourself and your audience to hear but then there is a big but here. These settings do not link in any way. So if you've found the perfect levels for everything, you can't link them together so you can adjust one and then the other one moves accordingly. And that is frustrating. If you wanted, say, your mic boosted for the creator mix and audience mix at the same time, then moving the mic will only adjust it for that creator mix instead of both. Instead, you'll have to go and manually adjust both, and this is time consuming, but also could throw your mix out entirely. Clicking on each knob brings up more windows at the bottom of the page for your mic level and gain. You can set your microphone type, such as dynamic XLR, condenser XLR with phantom power plus 48 volts or 6.3 millimeters, which is if you have a mic plugged into the jack adapter in the back. On the right, you can enable noise gate, compressor, EQ, echo, and reverb. Clicking any of these opens a new window for more detailed options, which is definitely a nice touch, but there's no way of assigning an echo or a reverb toggle switch to the pads or the touchscreen. So if you want to enable or disable them, then you have to manually open up the software to do this. Also, when using the microphone, the active level that is displayed to see if the audio is clipping, etc., is super buggy. The mic meter is very sluggish and is pretty much unusable because it's not displaying in real time. It's like a second delay and it's just all jittery. Clicking the screen and pads area opens up the hotkeys and widgets on the left hand side and anyone familiar with Stream Deck software will feel at home here as it's very similar in design and operation. The pads area and screen both use the same hotkeys and widgets so you can either assign something to the pads or the screen. Nothing is locked to one or the other which is a nice touch so it's down to you which order you assign them. The touch screen panel at the bottom shows five pages and that's all you get here. There's no way of creating folders or more pages and certain widgets take up more space than others which aren't resizable. On the left you can see how large they will be as under the name you'll see 1x1 one one or 5x3 for example. So you can control the Nexus itself such as switching profiles, muting, enable or disable soundboards but you do need to have the sound files downloaded to link them to the soundboard. You can assign website shortcuts, multimedia functions etc. There's also support for Ava Media's Rec Central capture card software, OBS Studio, YouTube, and Twitch. And what I really like is the inclusion of the chat box widget. This is probably my favorite thing here because this displays your chat in real time on the Nexus's screen. And this is ideal for those streaming with only one monitor. There's Spotify support and Streamlabs OBS web control as well. When you choose one that you want, just drag it onto the screen or the pad, and then you have more options at the bottom to link actions. So plenty of options to play around with here, but you can't manually resize any of those tabs if you want to. They're just locked to their preset size. When using the touchscreen, one thing I found strange was the lack of animation when scrolling through the pages. And this just felt a little jarring to me. And until you let go of the screen, you're unsure whether you're actually changing the screen or not, as there's no indication of it registering your movement until it just appears on the next screen. There's 
also about a half second delay from when you press something on the screen for it actually then working. It just feels just that little bit sluggish. Finally, in the top right, there's a settings tab. And here you can link your Twitch accounts, Spotify accounts, etc. General tab lets you check for updates. Hardware tab lets you customize the sleep time of the screen, brightness, background of the screen, and colors too. Function keys controls the colors of the pads. Volume selection lets you change the RGB LED colors around your knobs. And you can also change the RGB LED zone that runs around the Nexus itself. Lastly, our output tab is pretty basic basic with audio mixer sample rate, line out source, and chat mic source. So overall the software is okay, but it is fairly basic and it's kind of intuitive after a few minutes of use. Those new to streaming or working with audio may feel a little bit overwhelmed here though. I also found the software just a little bit sluggish and the issues with the mic meter being almost unusable was sad to see. Instead you're going to have to have your recording or streaming software open to view the mic levels properly. I love the dual mix option, but again, this was let down by the lack of being able to link them once you'd set them up. My favorite feature is definitely the YouTube or Twitch chat screen that can be viewed on the Nexus screen itself. So in conclusion, I think that Ava Media really tried to push against the competition here and make a one-stop shop for live streamers, but there's just too many things that frustrated me in use, and overall, these frustrations do add up to the AX310 Nexus being a bit of a letdown. I was honestly expecting more from it. I think it's definitely got potential, and I like the direction that they're heading with it. If they spent more time refining the software, made it overall more snappy, made the mic meter work in real time to make it useful, gave options to make folders and more pages for the screen, added animations when you change the screen, let you resize or adjust the widgets, expanded the physical screen itself, making the pad smaller, and gave you XLR outputs for speakers, and also gave you the option for adjustable angle height, then the AX310 Nexus would really make some headway in the streaming and content creating world. As for now, I'd recommend that you wait and either see how the firmware updates improve the system overall or whether they bring out a version 2. If you absolutely can't wait, then I'd highly recommend getting yourself a GoXLR and Stream Deck, or better yet, you can actually save some money considering you could buy a GoXLR Mini and a Stream Deck Mini combined for around £230, which is nearly £100 cheaper than the AX310 Nexus by Ava Media. So what do you guys think of the AX310 Nexus? We'd love to know. Will you be getting one or will you be getting an alternative? Let us know down in the comments. Check out our merchandise down below and check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.